Oh, okay. This is our journey to um, Somerset West, and the date is um, What is it today? Okay, it's the 20th of um, September in 2012. Yeah, enjoy. Love y'all. Hello, can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you guys. It's technical issues. Oh, uh, okay. No. Can you hear us now? I can hear someone oh. saying, can you hear us now? Oh, please don't. Did you guys enjoy the film? Oh, yeah. Yes. We had a really, really good time. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you guys for going to see my movie. Uh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> so yeah, we had a couple questions here. Do you guys want to, whoever's the first question? Hi. Hi. Okay, my name is Tumi and I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. And the question I want to ask is that um, why did you choose the title the the beast the beast of the southern wild? Um. So it came from uh, the play. I think uh, you guys were on when I was talking about how there's a play that this was loosely based on, uh, and it was something that the uh, the cook in Elysian Fields says that was in the play that got cut. That line got cut out of the movie, but there was something about it that just felt right. We just really liked it, and we we thought about changing it to other titles, but it just nothing else ever really fit. Um, what was the title? But of the yeah, play? there there was something that uh, the play was called Juicy and Delicious, and um, the the cook said something like, "We're all just beasts of the southern wild." At some point, and like when she's giving uh, giving hush puppy advice. Very cool. Cool. Hello. Hello. My question is: Can you talk about the relationship between hush puppy and Tavano? Um, sure, anything specific or just in general? Just in the movie, especially with the fact that the, the father expected her to be the strong person. You know, she want, he wanted her to be very manly and right. whenever the story, like, act like a man and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a complicated relationship with them. I mean, I think he's... We always thought about him as being, like, he's someone we wanted to be... He's clearly a very flawed father in a lot of ways. Um, he um, he cares about Hush Puppy like an incredible amount, but <clears throat> doesn't always know how to express it properly. I mean, one thing you'll notice is like anytime he's kind of overwhelmed with like emotion towards her is also when he sort of lashes out and starts being the worst father and doing the most upsetting things, just because he doesn't really know how to deal with those kind of things. It's, it's out of his domain. He's sort of been making it up as he goes along since he's a single father. Um, but I think it was our hope that he would be, even though he does upsetting things and is not perfect, that he would, you would get that he cared about her so much and that uh, he did have a good heart and that doesn't forgive the kind of not good things he does to her. But I, I think it's more interesting having uh, sorry, my control. Um, uh, it's more interesting having characters who are complicated and you have mixed feelings about than <clears throat> just someone who's like a villainous father or someone who's a perfect father. Um, and yeah, in the, I think one of the things was that he didn't know anything about girls and that's why he's always like saying things like be a man. He, like, doesn't, he just like really doesn't even understand like Probably partially that he want he like always imagined himself having a son, um, but also just his relationship to the world is is wrapped up in all these ideas of like manliness um, that he he pushes on her, um, you know, for better or worse. I think sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, uh, but it, it, it's part of him just being confused as a father. Do you have time for one more? 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah. 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 My question is, where is Ashpaz from? An actress. Where is she from? Do you say? Yeah. Uh, she's from Homa, Louisiana, which is about 20 minutes from where we shot the film. Which is very, very lucky, because we looked for kids. We saw about 4,000 little girls for the role of Hush Puppy across uh, the state of Louisiana. Uh, probably about a three-hour radius from where we were. And we got very lucky that she... She ended up being perfect, um, and she was just from right there. So she got to go home every night and sleep in her bed, which I think made it a lot easier because you know she's she was only six, and everything that you can do to make life still be a little bit normal. And that process is very, is good. I know there was a, an interesting story about the father as well and his casting. Can you, can you tell that story? Um, yeah, yeah. I, um, so he was a bake. He's a baker. Um, no one in the movie had ever really acted before. We we found them all just because we thought that they were compelling people in real life and thought people other than movie stars should also get to be stars and that there's, there's people you meet every day who are amazing people who are probably more fun to spend time with on screen sometimes than like Brad Pitt or George Clooney or people like that. Um, and we, we he is someone, we would go into his bakery all the time because his food was delicious and he, he, he's just this compelling like it's like the sweetest man you'll ever meet and everyone in the neighborhood loves him um, so we can we tried to convince him to to try out for the part um, or to just audition in general we didn't even know for what but we liked him um, and he wouldn't do you know he'd say yes and then he wouldn't show up and then one day he finally we've asked him enough times he agreed to, to come in um, we saw him and he was amazing so we asked him to come back again and again he kind of avoided it uh, we got him to come back in again, and when Ben, the director, watched the tape like, two weeks later, he was like, this guy's great, I think he might be it, and we all watched and agreed. And we went to look for him in his bakery, closed, and that was the only way we knew him. Like, we didn't have any other way to find him, we would always just go to his bakery, and it, was, but it wasn't like closed for the day, it was like, you know, it was gated up, like seemed out of business. And we searched for him for two months before figuring out that he... Um, he probably uh, that he had opened up a new uh, bakery across town that he was just expanding moving to a new location and he had just kind of gone on vacation basically and gone off the map uh, so we went into his bakery the second day it had opened and told him that we thought we wanted him to have the lead part or one of the lead parts in the movie and he said you guys are crazy there's no way I can do that I just opened up a new business I'm touched but you know thanks let me go back to uh, baking um, and he ended up refusing the part three times before taking it, uh, but we ended up figuring, helping him figure out how to make it work with his bakery. We would during rehearsals, we would go in every night because um, to bake he would he would have to bake between midnight and seven a.m. So we would go in during those hours and read lines with him back and forth uh, while he was uh, you know making donuts while he's like pounding dough and putting jelly in the donuts, uh, and he would you know his hands would be full, so we would just like read him lines, he'd read them back to us. <clears throat> and Ben and him would would you know talk through what the the character meant, and Ben would ask him questions about his life, which uh, we would then incorporate back into the movie and the character. Is is he still acting now, or is he going? Has he gone back to bacon? Uh, he he's doing both. He's trying to figure out how to how to do both as much as possible. So one of the amazing things is uh, since then, both him and Quentin A actually got cast in uh, a movie alongside Brad Pitt and. Uh, Michael Fassbender, which is wow. we're all very amused by, um, but he's also uh, opening up new bakeries, uh, and it, it, the movies helped him both as a baker and an actor. And he's he's trying to figure out how to do it all at once. <laughs> do you have time for one more, Josh? Or absolutely, yeah, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Last one. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Josh, we just wanted to find out about the effects that you used. Like, um, there was a lot of exaggeration in, in terms of sound. Whenever uh, Hush Puppy was scared, you would suddenly have these walls breaking down, except except for the animals running and, and the sound that's coming out there. 
How did you do that? With the effects the and, yeah. Yeah, so we the iceberg poems. Um, so yeah, it was a mixture of different. Did, I, did you guys hear when I explained the Oryx stuff before, or were you guys off for that? Not really. It was breaking up. Okay, well that's the most fun one, so I'll just tell you about that. Um, so the Oryx, um, basically, usually when you do Oryx or when you do monsters in films of any sort, something that doesn't really exist, the way they do them now is mostly with computer-generated effects. They really just build them in the computer and then stick them in the movie, and we really didn't want to do that because there's something less fun and alive about it. It just didn't seem like it would fit into Hush Puppy's world very well. Um, so we knew we wanted to do something that felt much more like movies you would have seen like 20, 30 years ago, um, where there's just something more fun. And when, um, and so we decided we wanted to use live animals, which took us a long time how to figure that out. But we decided we wanted to do it, and so we spent about a year of trying to figure out how that could possibly work. And what we ended up doing was we got baby pigs um, who were, you know, tiny, um, and dressing them up in costumes. And, uh, and, you know, putting horns on them and putting them inside miniature environments. So when you see them, like, trampling that, that village in the one scene, those buildings are, you know, like, the size of a shoe or something, or the height of, like, a shoe if you stood it up. Um, and they were trampling them because pigs like popcorn, apparently, more than anything. So you put <laughs> popcorn inside the houses, and uh, our pig trainer would stand at the end of the ramp where these tiny buildings were and hold popcorn and they would just charge through and just decimate everything. <laughs> but because the buildings were so small and you shoot at certain angles and speeds, there's like a whole technique to it, they seem like they're 12 feet tall. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It's so nice talking to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.